In the summer of 1974, Don Crowley, whom you all know, needled me into doing a few paintings. He'd, he'd, I'd done paintings of Indians and hunting scenes and things. And he said, why don't you do a few paintings and send them to a gallery out here in, in uh, Arizona? And that gallery sold the paintings and contacted me directly and asked if I would do some more, which I did, and they sold those. And, and that's the way it started. The whole idea of the American West and the the, the buffalo culture, the plains people, and, and I'm happiest when I'm painting the Native Americans. I feel more comfortable. Their culture just absolutely fascinates me, the, the way they lived, you know, the, the hunting culture, the, the nomads, the horse culture. Uh, it was a fascinating period, and, and the people, painting those people is just a challenge to me because most of them don't look like they used to. So if I can create those people to look the way they used to look, that's, that's a challenge. I have to start with the title, uh, The Red Ribbon. Uh, that's the whole uh, point of the story. I, I wanted to get a feeling of motion and as if this horse and rider were moving forward and, and quickly stopped because he saw this uh, red ribbon or a piece of red calico caught on a branch and of course was immediately wondering uh, what it might be. So that's the story. Uh, I'm, I'm always telling some kind of a story, trying to anyway. So I wanted to get the feeling of motion and carry the figure and the horse a little bit past uh, left of center. Uh, and it's just a, a, a case of, of uh, cool against warm and, and uh, and simple values to create a strong uh, visual image uh, with a dark horse and a light figure against a gray background. The figure is, is uh, rather carefully done, the face is rather carefully done, but I still tried to keep it uh, loose so that it didn't look uh, too uh, tightly painted. Uh, lose an edge here and carry this line over to here. Uh, always with painting, it's important to, to lose edges and find edges so that a figure or a horse doesn't have a cutout look on a painting. It has to be part of the scene. So the edges and the way they're treated are always very important. I started as a, an apprentice uh, in an art studio, Sunbloom, Haddon Sunbloom Studio. He was considered the uh, dean of, uh, of advertising illustrators, so I was fortunate to uh, you know, get into his studio as an apprentice. He, I took all my life drawings from art school and, and he studied all my life drawings and what he particularly liked was the way I drew hands and feet. <laughs> because he said most artists would slough off the feet that was too hard, they didn't want to bother with it. And I had fortunately drawn the feet very carefully. And then I became his personal apprentice. And then he uh, started uh, me in on his paintings, working on his paintings. And he said he got bored painting hands, so he'd ask me to paint the hands. This painting is called uh, Passing into Womanhood. And uh, in this ritual, which in this case happens to be Cheyenne, I wanted to show the part where she's being purified and to show this uh, beautiful little uh, girl in her innocence with the grandmother and, in this case, the mother. But this is a very sensitive, very feminine scene, and so I wanted a lot of curves in this painting and a softness to it, and I wanted things to, to flow and lead, you see, around, everything coming around, so that it's, it's all enclosed in this, in this small grouping. And, and these curves suggest the softness. The beginning of a painting is always exciting, you get the canvas covered and you get things going, but when it gets to the point where you've just got to sit there every day and work on that painting until it's finished, then it becomes a chore sometimes. And, and I have to go in the studio and paint every day whether I want to or not, I just have to do it. I washed a, um, sort of a, an ochre green 
color over the whole canvas initially, which I always do, not necessarily that color combination, but a wash of color to get rid of the white space. And, uh, and then I, uh, I start the painting after the drawing is on the canvas. I start the painting by, by laying in uh, some of my lightest lights to establish a value, and then go to some of the darkest darks, and then hit the mid-range uh, values so that the painting starts to take shape overall. I like to work around the whole painting uh, uh, at once to keep it all moving. And this painting has a cool light, so my shadow area tends to be warmer. And then I have somewhat of a cool reflected light coming in from this side. Um, it's uh, just a really simple, straightforward portrait. You constantly have to keep in mind the drawing, the structure, and the likeness and the color and the brush stroke. So there's a lot to think about as, uh, as the painting develops. By the time I was six years old, I was drawing a lot. I remember that. In fact, my father saved a lot of the little drawings that I did, which I still have. Oddly, one of them was a drawing of uh, some Indians and, and teepees and horses. And the horses looked like dogs, and, and uh, the teepees were sort of semi-recognizable, but the figures weren't. But, I thought that was kind of ironic.